All right, guys, so Q&A answering the question, how you grew your arms so big. So thank you for the compliment. My arms were probably the biggest part of, you know, my body uh, for muscles. I think my triceps were pretty, you know, genetically gifted. They just grow uh, a lot, even though I couldn't pay a lot of attention to them and they would still grow quite decently. And then my biceps were just pretty decent. And also I would love arms, so I would train them a lot. So I made another video about this actual subject. And I think I pretty much summed up what was good about it. But in this video, I'm gonna try to go more in depth. This video will uh, basically, you know, explain most of the details of how to grow, you know, your arms bigger. And I will probably make another video uh, in the future about concepts like five by fives, etc. And if that can actually be adapted to arms, uh, because it's something that I see often in the research, you know, because people see five by five, five by three, etc. For deadlifts for uh, compound movements, they want to know if they can actually apply this cool techniques to things like arms, you know, like curls, etc. And this is also something that I wondered back in the days. So it's an interesting uh, question to wonder and I think I will make other videos. This video will really be for beginners, intermediates and advanced. I think that for beginners it will really be about teaching uh, how to really start with the right things to do to grow your arms big from the get-go from the start and for intermediate and advanced you might wonder why I say intermediate and advanced because if people are intermediate and advanced they might not need these advices but here I want to say that for intermediate and advanced people that have lagging arms because a lot of intermediate and advanced people got a great overall physique they're pretty large they're basically a bit like power lifters they usually don't really focus on arms so they have lagging arms compared to their overall frame but some bodybuilders also fall in this uh, case of you know having lagging arms while having other very developed muscles so we're gonna see why and how these intermediate and advanced people can grow their arms massive so my recommendations for beginners intermediate and advanced on how you should train your arms per week i think i want to start the video saying this for beginners the first thing i want to say is get used to training get used to the movements that you're doing all the movements obviously if you're a total beginner for every muscle and if you're doing biceps you know get used to uh, the movements uh, the best movements just get used to them give yourself some time with light weight the certain movement patterns etc before starting to go heavier uh, and to play around so for all beginners usually i think that you know a good session a week is enough for biceps uh, start to train biceps seriously once a week, you know, 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes combining, you know, things like back and biceps together uh, or chest and triceps can be interesting because obviously you don't want to give an hour and a half to your biceps when you're a beginner. This is ridiculous. This is too much. You don't want to do this. So you can actually uh, do them after back, you know, after they're well warmed up from back exercises because you involve your biceps a lot when you do uh, back and give them one or two exercises you know, two exercise, basic, great exercises for biceps, four sets each, and that's it. Really follow the basics, don't do too much. Uh, do them after back or after chest for your triceps if you want. Uh, 30 minutes with simple, plain, basic exercises, or 45 minutes, but not more than this. I think you will improve a long way already. Now, when you're intermediate, you might want to follow the same advice where you train, you know, seriously your biceps after, for example, back or after triceps, you might also start implementing, if you want, arm days. So arm days where you pay, you know, two, three exercises for your biceps and the same for triceps, pay some good attention to basic plane exercises, as I said, uh, for beginners. And if you want to, obviously, and you have time for recovery, etc., you know, not only doing back and biceps together or triceps uh, with stress, but you can actually do arm days, start implementing arm days. Now, when you're advanced and you're really someone who goes to the gym more, you know, who already has built, you know, some arms, but want to go to the next level in terms of, you know, how big your arms are, start giving your arms some days. Start really treating them like other muscles. This will be something that we'll talk about in this video. Start treating small muscles like bigger muscles. Uh, we'll just see that warm up for small muscles and, you know, being more aware is important but you want to treat small muscles the same way that you treat your big muscles. So that was it basically for all these categories, beginners, uh, intermediate and advanced, you know, kind of uh, how much you should work out per week your uh, arms. Now, someone might wonder, do genetics matter when it comes to arms? We have weaknesses and strong parts. And so that can be the case for arms. You can have, you know, very short insertions and other people will have, you know, longer muscles. And so that can play 
but I think forearms can build massive arms if you want to. There are techniques for that. We have muscle like the brachialis as well that you can implement in your workouts to make your biceps look bigger. And as well, I think that short biceps actually don't look bad. It gives you the peak. So there is a way to actually, maybe for people who have short muscles, you know, short biceps and short triceps to still make their, their arms look big because when you have short muscles, mostly on your arms, uh, it looks very peaky. I don't know how to say that, but like obviously you have a great peak on your biceps and your triceps is a bit of the same when you have short triceps, like it really goes 3D. You will have very massive, massive arms if you have massive uh, long biceps and long triceps, you know, as muscles, but they won't look probably as good as if they were a bit shorter, etc. So having short muscles for biceps or arms in general is not such a bad thing. And as I said, you can work on muscles like the brachialis to make your arm thicker. So there's really no excuse, even if they're not massive, you can make them look good. So no excuse in terms of genetics for arms. I don't want to hear anyone say, I can't grow my arms because of my genetics. So the first thing I want to say for beginners and people who might be intermediate and advanced and have lagging arms is to understand the obviously arm composition that they have. For beginners, it's going to be a bit hard. I would advise you to build a good base, to start building some muscle to understand what your muscles are made of. So for intermediate and advanced, for example, they might already have some good shape uh, for their arms and some muscle, and they might be able to say, well, I have short biceps, uh, I have short triceps or long triceps, whatever, and they can actually adapt the exercises to this you know, composition that they understand better. So understanding your arm composition can be interesting for uh, the future if you're a beginner and you become more intermediate and advanced to choose the type of exercises that you want to do. If, for example, you have very long biceps and this peak uh, is not really there, well, you can work on your brachialis. You know, you can choose to do some exercises according to, the, to uh, what your muscle composition is, your body morphology. So the first thing I think is to understand as soon as you can, basically, your uh, body composition or your arms. Then following this, like I said, specializing is very important. So specializing, uh, in my own definition, as I often say, has many basically categories. And so the first one that I was saying here is choosing the best exercises that you can for yourself according to who you are, your body morphology. So I already just explained this. But then it's also sticking to the exercises. So as soon as you found good exercises for yourself, stick to them because you will only be able to progress once you start sticking to exercises, uh, once you start progressing on certain exercises where you can actually measure because if you keep switching uh, exercises over and over, then you will never improve consistently, frequently, and you will won't be able to measure. Also, in my opinion, for uh, biceps, triceps, or any muscle, you should probably, you know, have an exercise for basically each angle that you can target. And that's it. You really don't need more. Don't try to basically in your routine have exercises which target exactly the same thing. I would rather have you choose a great exercise and add more sets to this exercise rather than to do more exercises for nothing. So here's the same thing. Don't try to have five exercises for biceps. Just have two or three, which are great. Uh, do more of these ones, you will actually improve faster on these ones and so you will be almost all faster. Uh, this is what you should do, you know, practice makes better and the more you practice a movement, the better you will get at it. So the more sets you do at this exercise, obviously, the faster you will improve. This is why you shouldn't have 20 exercises for something because you will not improve as fast as if you were just doing the same movement all the time. So even though that might sound boring, this is the best way to improve fast, specialize, stick to the same movement, uh, the same routine, in the same order, try to measure basically things as much as possible. Now growing your arms bigger, one of the things which is the most important is to treat your small muscles like the big ones. So there is a little particularity here that I want to bring is that yes, obviously biceps are pretty small muscles, triceps as well. You want to be careful, you want to warm up well, you want to be really aware that you're training them, that you're going heavier on them, you want to mentally prepare before, you know, lifting heavy. Uh, obviously, you have to do this as well when you need to squat, when you do bench press, but here even try to be a bit more aware that you're going to train these muscles uh, with quite heavy loads. You have, you know, fragile tendons. There are also muscles which are not very supported by others, uh, by other muscles. So, you know, when you do, for example, bench press, well, you're really assisted by your shoulders, by your triceps when you work on your chest. So I guess you 
you have more room for mistakes than when you train your biceps and it's really isolated and you don't want to fuck it up so yes be aware like i said pay attention to a good warm-up before you go heavier on your uh, arms but don't uh, treat them like uh, their shit if you want them to grow bigger start giving some love uh, to your biceps and triceps so again if you're a total beginner give yourself sometimes three to four weeks you know get used to uh, higher reps to, to just the movements and as soon as you start you know getting used very well to the movements to the practice of bodybuilding start to go a little bit heavier on them and not just stick basically to the pumping workouts that we see you know people who stick to cable exercises do 15 reps here and there without even remembering what you know weights they use and they come back to the next session they, they, they restart maybe lower than they were in before like they just come and they don't know what they're doing so here you really want to you know implement some like you would do for chest or for squat you know have a strength cycle a strength routine for your arms and then towards the end of the session you can do some hypertrophy sets where uh, you really try you know to work on the building muscle face yes you can do this but uh, start going heavier as well on your arms force the progression also i want to come back to when i said you know training biceps and triceps for example with back or with chest uh, I said that for beginners, it was a pretty good thing that they could do. For advanced, maybe not as much when I give real arm days. So I wanted to explain a bit more this part. I think that for advanced or intermediate, you know, when you do a whole back session uh, and after you have to do your biceps, you're definitely tired on your biceps. So you're not really paying the best attention that you should pay them, for example. I think that in the end, as long as you stick to your routine, that you measure things exactly the same way, you would still improve a lot, uh, you know, doing back and, and your biceps after, because at the end of the day, it's always the same thing that you're doing. So you can measure and you can still uh, say, well, I'm doing this on my biceps and I keep improving. You will just be a bit tired after your back, but as it's always the same uh, routine, then you can still measure and you can still, you know, improve to an advanced level doing this. But I still think that in some days when you train your back and you're well tired after back, well, you might, care, you might care a bit less about your biceps and your triceps, so about your arms basically. And that if it's a real priority for you, then obviously starting fresh, fully focused and nervously, uh, mechanically uh, on your arms is obviously something better than doing them after a long session of back or a long session of chest for your triceps. So obviously this is why I was uh, saying, uh, you know, give real arm days, in my opinion, giving real arm days is even better if it's a priority for you. So I just wanted to come back to this little explanation of the back biceps uh, thing. Finishing with a little uh, question, I wanted to talk about the brachialis. Don't neglect the brachialis. Uh, I think it looks great on an arm when you actually flex uh, and it really brings some uh, thickness to your arms. Uh, it brings up your biceps peak. So this is a muscle not to neglect. And I would say that I did neglect it when I was a beginner. Not really, I would do hammer curls, but without really, I wouldn't know what it was for, but I wouldn't do like sessions where we actually really try to pay attention to the brachialis, try to feel it. So if you're a beginner, this is something great that you can do. Uh, you know, start, you know, paying attention to your brachialis. Uh, that might actually be paying off in later years as soon as, uh, as, as you grow uh, more than people like me who would have not paid much attention to it because they, they were just like, well, brachialis, who gives a shit about brachialis, right? Uh, but if you're a beginner and you start paying attention as early as possible, perhaps that could help you, you know, uh, get a bit thicker in this area and give you a better biceps peak, who knows, later on. So you might want to give... Uh, some attention, try to fill this muscle, which is not easy to fill even as, at an advanced level. Um, you know, try to pay attention to this. And obviously, if you're advanced or intermediate as well, uh, it starts to work on this muscle, which can add uh, an inch or, you know, an inch more maybe to your arms and also help uh, your biceps have a better peak. So don't neglect the brachialis and everything that is neutral grip, armor curls, etc. In my opinion, one of the best exercises which I've discovered I mean, it's, it's an exercise which already exists, I didn't invent it, but uh, something which uh, I really enjoyed is doing preacher hammer curls, honestly, to feel your brachialis and you incline your wrist uh, a little bit in a certain way like that. To really, you know, feel the brachialis is something uh, great to do. And I know it's not easy to explain on camera, but try preacher hammer curls and you might understand what I'm saying to feel the brachialis. 
progression is key. I want to remind that progression is key. You should always think about progression. Uh, one thing that people forget about sometimes is simply progression. They just go to their sessions and they forget about the fact that you know they need to measure, they need to do things well to actually in two weeks time say, well, I'm actually better than two weeks ago now. Uh, you know, people get caught up in their life, etc. And like they go to the gym, they kind of forget about why they're here and why they want to progress in the first place. And they kind of like, you know, fall into this routine of just chatting with their friends, doing a shitty pumpy workouts. So don't forget about progression. People who do bench press, uh, overhead press for their shoulders, who do, you know, squat and deadlift. These are exercises basically that they're okay to go heavy with because everyone goes heavy on them. Advanced and intermediate, sometimes they have lagging arms because they have exercises which they're okay to improve heavy on, like, uh, you know, bench press and overhead press, all these exercises where, yes, it's okay to go heavy. But when it comes to arms, for some reason, uh, you know, people don't feel like it's okay to do the same, treat the same as they would treat chest, etc. So you have to do the same for arms. If you don't just want to be the big frame person uh, with <coughs> lagging arms and basically be treated uh, for a power lifter. Now, obviously, one thing that I want to say is that if you want to grow big arms, you will grow big arms. And people who like arms usually have big arms and they figure out at some point how to grow big arms. They just spend shit amount of time on their arms because they love arms and they just grow big arms. At the end of the day, all these tips, I think, are good. But one thing in bodybuilding which always comes back is that we always go into details to explain this and that and it makes sense to an extent but at some point you know people who improve are people who just want to get bigger really bad and they just go to the gym a lot and they you know they, they find ways basically they research they they end up understanding that they, they do a few mistakes and then that's it they just train hard and they just improve and here is the same for arms you know people who like arms usually have, have big arms because they train arms a lot simple plain as this so i think all this advice that i give you is within you know the range where it's not going too much into details and i'm not wasting your time and it's actually valuable advice but at some point uh, the only thing to do to grow big arms is you know to eat and to train hard uh, and train your arms and that's it now the last thing i want to say is you know you can measure your arms to measure your progression obviously don't add uh, 15 kg of fat because you will be disappointed to see that this is only fat that you're adding to your uh, arms but yes, you uh, can measure yourself and don't measure yourself. Don't lie to yourself like a lot of people do with a, a, a tape. Even people who are you know, not here to brag or anything, they just measure themselves badly. And even the most you know, sensible persons, the most you know, cool persons, I guess, in the industry that are not here to uh, brag about arms that, you know, a size of arms that they don't have. But people just like to measure not the right way and they usually add an inch or two. I, I used to do this when I was younger and then I really didn't lie to myself. I would really uh, have to tape, you know, well tight on my skin, almost, you know, cutting the blood. Uh, so I'm not lying to myself. And people would tell me, well, you all, you have like 18 and a half, 19 inches arms. I'm like, well, no, it's more 18, you know, like I'm really going tight on it i'm not trying to cheat you know don't try to fool yourself by adding you know more centimeters than you have you know, if you're a beginner start uh, doing this the proper way not lying to yourself and uh, the results will come don't worry uh, and so measure your arms to see your progression over time as well you know once every two uh, two months or every month and uh, this is my last you know tip to actually enjoy you know, measuring the progression from all these tips that i gave you that you can implement so that was it. Uh, thank you to have, you know, sent me this question. So hope you enjoyed. If you did so, feel free to like, share and subscribe. And I will see you next time.